Okay, this is College Geometry Week 1, Video 2, Elements of an Axiomatic System. So one of the main goals of this course is to view mathematics in general, and of course geometry specifically, as an axiomatic system. And axiomatic systems have four basic elements, undefined terms, also known as primitive notions, postulates, also known as axioms, defined terms, and propositions, also known as theorems. Um, when we're working with an axiomatic system, what we want to do is we start with some undefined terms and we give them some meaning by the and some relationships by the postulates. Uh, those things are, the postulates are accepted without proof, but everything from there on has to be proved to be accepted. So, first of all, let's talk about each of these things uh, one at a time. Talk about undefined terms, also known as primitive notions. And they must, I mean, it says right, right there what they are. They're undefined terms. They remain undefined. And most of the time, uh, every study of geometry, point, line, and space are undefined terms. And some treatments of geometry, particularly a purely synthetic uh, approach like your textbook, between and on are also undefined terms. We have to leave some terms undefined in order to, afford, to avoid cyclic logic. You, know, you might think, well, you should be able to define everything, but if you look in a dictionary, how are words defined? They're defined with other words. If you follow this back, you're going to make yourself go in a circle. So eventually, there have to be just some certain basic things that you just kind of have an idea what they are. So, for example, knowing term A equals term B equals term C equals term A doesn't actually define the concept at all. It only gives the concept three different names. Uh, my grandfather understood this, and he used to play a game with my dad when he was little, and they both played it with me when I was little, too. He'd say, well, son, you're a, you're a Jim Dandy. He says, well, Dad, what's a Jim Dandy? Well, that's a Lollapalooser. Well, what's a Lollapalooser? Well, that's a corker. Well, what's a corker? That's a Jim Dandy. So notice what they've done. They've gone all the way around the circle. And according to my grandfather, all those things meant the same thing, but... Uh, we still don't know what it is necessarily. Okay, so you have to avoid this this uh, circular cyclic logic. And uh, Euclid was smart enough to realize this back when he put together his set of postulates. And so he had certain terms he knew that he would not actually define. So how do we give these terms some meaning? Well, we, that goes to what are called the postulates or axioms. Uh, in our treatment, the word axiom and postulate are complete synonyms. We can use them interchangeably. So postulates you can think of as the basic rules of the system. And when we're looking at the postulates as maybe Euclid would have looked at them, these would be the things that are just intuitively obvious. It's just sort of obvious that these things happen. They're, they're so obvious that we can take them as the ground rules of way the way the universe works is sort of the way that they looked at them. So back in the day of Euclid, we would think of postulates or axioms as being uh, sort of the ground rules for the universe, and these described the real world, but did it in such a way that it was sort of, uh, sort of obvious what, what was going on in the real world. On the other hand, when we look at it today, we would not approach it that way. Uh, after the discovery of of hyperbolic geometry, we no longer think of these things necessarily as describing the real world, although they might do that. What we think of them is just sort of rules of the game. So you can think of postulates as sort of being the rules. You don't like those postulates? Doesn't matter. Make up some new ones. You're going to be playing a different game, though. Now you're no longer in, say, Euclidean geometry. You're in something else. So, um, you have different postulates, you have different rules. So it's just like taking uh, your points and your lines and so forth might be like a, a deck of cards, but if we have different postulates, that might be different rules, and that might lead to different games, just like spades or blackjack or poker or go fish are all rules that games that you can play with a deck of cards, but they're completely different rules, they're completely different games. Of course, what we want to be is be internally consistent with our rules. Now, defined terms are things that, as it says, are defined, and definitions are always if and only if statements. It may not be stated as if and only if, but they really are if and only if statements. Basically, it says, um, 
some object with a certain set of properties is if it has those properties, if and only if it has those properties, it is given a certain name. So you know if it has the name, then it has the properties. And if it has those properties, we can name it appropriately by those names. Now, definitions must be well defined, and so there are some, um, sometimes we have to make sure that the definition is even allowable by being well defined. But what that means is, of course, uh, is that if we say it has a certain characteristics, we have to make sure that it's possible for those characteristics to actually uh, simultaneously exist. Now, um, those are sort of the ground, basic ground things, and then from that we prove propositions. So propositions are statements that are proved to be true. Postulates, on, in contrast, are accepted as true without proof. And again, if you don't like the postulates, that's fine. Change them, but then you've got a completely new game you're playing, completely new, different geometry. So uh, propositions are statements that we prove to be true, and what can we use to prove them? Well, they're based on previous postul postulates, defined terms, and previously proved theorems, along with maybe some definitions. And there are other names for uh, propositions. Uh, they include theorems, results, corollaries, and lemmas. And some of these things have a little bit of a value judgment associated with them. For example, a corollary is a proposition that's a nearly immediate consequence of another proposition. So it's, a, it's an immediate result. A lemma is a proposition that's primarily used only to prove a subsequent proposition. It's not really important in and of itself. But basically, you sort of sort of take a key part of a, a key step of a proof and sort of shove it out to a separate proposition. You call that a lemma. Okay? And then, if we're using these words, we would also often use the word theorem to reserve for a big result. Uh, for example, in my dissertation, there's basically you know, two basically big theorems. The rest are all called just propositions. Now, uh, so theorem, corollary, and lemma imply a certain level of importance and function. Uh, a lot of people will use the word theorem for any of these, and that's appropriate if you want to do that. But we're going to typically use the more neutral word called proposition for all of these um, things, thema, uh, theorems, uh, results, corollaries, lemmas, whatever we, whatever we have, and leave the judgment of the relative importance up to the reader. So we won't try to say that this one's important or that one's less important, at least not in what we name it so much. Occasionally we'll, we'll refer to a really big result as a theorem. Um, so when we have propositions, they have to be carefully proved, and we'll be using the rules of logic and previously established propositions, postulates, and definitions to prove them. And so this entire structure of Undefined terms, postulates, defined terms, and propositions, along with the proofs of the populate propositions, forms an axiomatic system. So a geometry is an ax axiomatic system consisting of points and possibly lines and planes, along with appropriate postulates, defined and undefined terms, theorems, and proofs. And the most famous of these is Euclidean geometry, of course, named after the great uh, Greek mathematician Euclid. But we'll also be studying uh, not only foundations of Euclidean geometry, but also some foundational work in several non-Euclidean geometries as well.